And another day of twists and turns in Malaysia, with Mahathir Mohamad and Anwar Ibrahim both signalling they are ready to be the next Prime Minister. Dr Mahathir has broken his silence in a nationally televised address, his first public comments since resigning on Monday. He's proposed a unity government not aligned with any party. Not long after that, Anwar Ibrahim declared he had the backing of parties from his coalition to be a Prime Minister. Now for more on this, Dr Mustafa Izzuddin joins us now. He is a research fellow from the Institute of South Asian Studies at the National University of Singapore. Dr Mustafa, Dr Mahathir has finally broken his silence. What's your impression of his televised address earlier? Well, I think it was timely and necessary. Uh, saying there needed to be clarity of what was going on. So his explanation uh, as to why he had resigned, uh, what was going on and what his plans are, I think those were things that were very important for people to hear. So that's why I think it was very timely and necessary that he did a public uh, announcement of what was happening. And, you know, not too long after that, Pakatan Harapan held their own news conference and uh, Anwar Ibrahim said that he had uh, the uh, majority of uh, the, the coalition to actually rule or to be the next Prime Minister. What can we read into the significance of this decision? And is it an indication of how deeply these battle lines are drawn? Certainly, I think uh, it's very difficult to now uh, determine what's going to happen. Uh, because there's a number of uh, scenarios that could play out. I think the first, which uh, Maha, Dr. Mahathir is keen on, is he has mentioned a unity government. But what a unity government actually means, what does it uh, comprise? I think it's really not very clear yet. Uh, does he mean uh, a, a government that uh, cuts across uh, the different political divides, across the political spectrum? Or does he mean a unity government where the MPs, the Member of Parliament, agreed that he could form a technocratic government. So I think it, the devil is in the details, and I think we've got to wait until more of these details come out. So that's one scenario. Another scenario is, of course, uh, he wants to form a government, whether it's, whether it's by unity or not, a sort of a technocratic government, where a government that rises above politics and just focuses on governing the country. Uh, and of course, the third scenario, which we have just heard, uh, is that uh, Anwar, Anwar Ibrahim has the backing of Pakatan Harapan, what's left of Pakatan Harapan, uh, and form a minority government. And uh, so we have all of these scenarios playing out. And of course, there's another scenario as well that if there is no majority in, in, uh, in parliament, they could, they could uh, I mean, there could be a snap election. Uh, so I mean, all of these scenarios are now on the table and we just have to wait which of these scenarios will be picked. In his speech, Dr. Mahathir did say that he would only work with members who leave UMNO. Do you think he has support enough or enough support from individual UMNO MPs who might be willing perhaps to jump ship to support him as staying as PM? So right now anything is possible, but I think what he's looking at is uh, trying to um, form, as he said, a unity government, try and get as many people who, can be, who believes in his program to try and get the government going. Uh, because as you know, I mean, they have been in uh, government for now less than two years. Uh, but uh, they need to be delivering on the promises that they've made to the Malaysian people. And, and he has also mentioned in his televised address that uh, there are urgent pressing needs to do with the economy, to do with what's happening with the coronavirus outbreak and how that's affecting Malaysia, so on and so forth. So his, uh, his program right now, uh, is to focus on governing the country rather than uh, focusing on all his party politics. Um, do you know uh, Mr. Anwar says that he has the backing of the remaining parties uh, to uh, form yeah. these uh, coalition, correct? Do you think it will be enough yeah. to convince the king that Anwar has the majority support and do you think he can command the majority in parliament? I think right now his, Anwar's challenge is really to get uh, a coalition that is uh, that, pro can, that can provide him with a simple majority in parliament. Uh, as Pakatan Harapan, they have the largest number of seats, but you need at least 112 seats to command a majority in parliament. So I think his, his, his challenge right now is to try and get the other uh, members of parliament uh, who may jump ship or who may at this point not align themselves with any coalition to get them onto the Pakatan Harapan bandwagon 
so that he can then form a majority uh, uh, to, to get a majority in parliament and form the government. Now, if he can't do that, then of course there is the possibility of a minority government. Minority government is of course possible because Pakatan Harapan has a major has um, has, is the largest party in uh, in parliament. But of course, minority governments tend to be unstable. Uh, so we'll just have to see whether the king um, agrees to this minority government or he feels that Pakatan Harapan. Uh, has you know they have to widen uh, their reach and get the get the MPs necessary to form a majority a, uh, to form to get a majority in parliament. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, Dr. Mustafa. Dr. Mustafa Izudin, research fellow from Institute of South Asian Studies at the National University of Singapore.